Hey guys, Jason Lee, Game English here. Don't forget your coffee. If you guys think this coffee cup is uh, cool, uh, just make a comment down in the comment section. My buddy throws clay. He makes them. He's got a whole series of cool coffee mugs and also sake cup sets and sake jar sets. So if you guys are interested in anything custom made like that, let me know. He's got an Etsy shop. Okay, two things. This video is going to cover. I took out the current production T6B and S4 and chronograph them through all of the current 5.7 mainstream pistols. Um, I did this for two reasons. One, people wanted updated numbers, and two, I've actually had to change my loadings a little bit and I wanted to make them a little more current. All right, now this could be a two-part video. Uh, the second half of the video is gonna be all of the video from me test shooting and the average velocity standard deviations for each of the, uh, the 5.7, the Rock, the Smith & Wesson and uh, the uh, Ruger R57. But more importantly, I think I touched on this in one of the older videos. Uh, on the FN57, one of the few things it wears out is right here, is the uh, cam. Now, anybody here who's had me do an accurizing on their USG, their older USG, odds are I've replaced that cam. Uh, the cam wears out. This is the one thing. This is a high wear item in the FN57. Uh, this is a metal injection molded cam. And what happens is, is the crust wears out, then you get to the soft stuff on the center, and that's dragging on the hardened steel slide. And it creates a dragging sensation, and it actually can create a reliability situation. So it's very often, uh, if I've done the accurizing on your pistol, and it's an older USG or IOM, and that cam is worn out, you've gotten the cam back in a Ziploc bag, and you've had to pay for the new part. Uh, one of the issues is, though, is FN never has these in stock, and I go through them way too much. So I'm actually having my own tool steel versions manufactured. So I will sell them separately, so if people want to upgrade their cam to the heavy-duty tool steel cam that'll be hardened and everything and ready to go, far stronger than this metal injection molded cam, the option will be there. Okay, and I'm also doing it a lot for myself so that I have the cams to do the uh, replace the cams and the pistols because I do do a large number of five sevens. Now, along those veins, we have the rock lower. The rock uses the same cam and everything. They do it under license from FN. The issue is with the rock uh, is the cam is smaller. Now, um, long term, I was really I was really happy with the rock. Everything I like about the rock. Uh, was really nice, but I've actually got to be honest, we've come into some issues with the rock. Um, this is, I had the one rock uh, that had about uh, 6,000 rounds through it and the cam shattered. I also had another rock with a threaded barrel and the first time I shot that, the cam shattered. Uh, basically, this cam is substantially smaller than the cam on the FN57. It is metal injection molded. Uh, it is not the strongest cam in the world. Uh, I'm kind of bummed about that because there was a lot of things I like about the, the uh, PSA Rock, uh, but their cam is on the weak side. Their cam cannot handle 48,000. Now this is, you know, and I'll put the numbers up. I load all, unless it's velocity specific, 5.7 ammunition from Elite Ammunition is set to 48,000 PSI at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, there is no SAMI specification. Okay, there's CIP specification, which is the European version of SAMI, and the CIP does both sporting and military rounds, unlike SAMI. So right here is the CIP. Slide that shows what the pressure limit is. All of EAs, normally industry standard is 70 degrees. I go with 80 because I spend enough time in the desert and stuff like that. Uh, I just wanted that a larger safety margin. The fact of the matter is, the newer five, some of the newer 5.7 pistols cannot even handle 48,000 psi pressure ammunition. Uh, unfortunately, the rock is one of them. The cam just not does not sustain, especially with the threaded barrel, cannot handle 48,000 psi pressure. Uh, supposedly, they tested it and confirmed that they did. Uh, but I've seen nothing other than my own experience of these cams shattering. The other issue is is the Ruger. Uh, now, it hasn't happened with any of our ammunition, but the Rugers have broken some frames, and the SS-198 has shattered the front rails on the Ruger. So I don't know where that's going to go with the Ruger, but either way, 
I'm dropping our pressures down to 45,000 PSI at 80 degrees. Uh, just because the other 5.7s in the market right now can't handle it. The FN 5.7, um, as long as the cam isn't worn out, the FN 5.7 can easily go up to 60,000 PSI and you might get a pop primer, but the gun is fine. It actually, the, the pictures that you see with uh, blown up 5.7s, it's people have double loaded or they've had a squib load and they've shot into the back of the squib load. That's what will blow up the pistol. Well, that'll blow up a metal pistol too, all right? But the FN 5.7 is a true military-grade weapon issued to militaries around the world. Now, on a side, and they've got the big in-depth video coming up. As of right now, I've had zero issues with the Smith & Wesson. The Smith & Wesson with the recoil system and their gas operating system, as long as the components hold up, they've come up with a really smart and innovative way to control the pressures of the 5.7 round, making it very... Uh, manageable in the pistol. Uh, so I foresee the 5.7 from Smith & Wesson being a solid duty gun, uh, very narrow and everything. Take that with a grain of salt though because I thought the uh, PSA was not going to have any issues because I was initially really impressed. I went through the first 5,000 rounds with one without any issues whatsoever and then I had a cam with blow up and then I had another cam go on another one that had hardly any rounds through it at all. It was literally a brand new one, threaded barrel, everything popped, the cam went. And that was with S4, and S4 has been an established run we've been making almost 20 years. So take it with a grain of salt. Like I said, I got a large in-depth video coming up. But that being said, kind of back to the other one, I was I'm already having the cam made for the FN57 so people can upgrade to a stronger cam. I am having tool steel cams made for the rock. Uh, and I'll put some in, insert some pictures here. You can see the metal injection molded cam and how it just shattered. And uh, because I think I think it's because just it's just a smaller cam. It's a smaller version of what's in the 5.7, and then you have a smaller pin, smaller pin, and you have more load going through a smaller component, and it just can't handle it. So I'm going to be having CNC tool steel cams for the PSA Rock also. Prices aren't going to be that bad. They're not going to be that cheap either because it's short run stuff, but the prices uh, aren't going to be totally crazy. And also... Uh, guys, give me some feedback down there on your gray rocks. Um, the pin for the trigger backing out, walking out to this side. Uh, I always had that happen with this one uh, where the pin would keep walking out and I kept popping it back in. And I thought it was just me or just something weird. And it turns out I talked to uh, Matt Hoffman, Buffman Range, and he's got a gray one. It, he's got a gray and the gray likes to have the pin walk out on his also. So I'm not sure if this is a trend or if this just happens to be early production polymer or just something that's happening for the two, uh, to the two of us. But if anybody on there has a uh, gray PSA rock that has had that pin walk out, let me know. Uh, Got to be honest, I mean, I still really like the rock. Uh, I own two of them, and I don't plan on getting rid of them anytime soon. Um, I think maybe some of this, maybe it is a brand new gun. I've commented in the past that... With the FN57, this is like Gen 7. This is, this, you know, they got the Mark III out right now. Technically, it's not really the Mark III because there's a bunch of prior versions prior to the uh, uh, IOM. Uh, insert big slide here showing the complete evolution of the 5.7. Uh, this for the PSA Rock is the first generation. It's their first attempt on it. Um, I don't see corners being cut on it. Like I said, on the Ruger 5.7, I could just see every corner cut. It just, it just felt like crap. I never... Never really liked it. I have one making sites for it. It's still not on my top 10 list. The Ruger mags still suck. Uh, Rock made better mags and their Brock mags work better in the Ruger than they do. The Ruger mags work in the Ruger. But, and you'll see that in the test video. But uh, I think this is maybe just a first generation issue that they probably will either address down the uh, road or you can just get the cam from me, swap the cam over. It's really not that hard to do. It's just a couple of pins. This comes out. Once you disconnect a little slider, there's a little slider on the side here for the takedown notch. Once you get the little plate and stuff out of the way for that, this whole top half comes right out and you'll be able to swap out the new cam and put the new cam in. 
Um, beyond that, like I said, our S4 and T6, now our S4 is still substantially faster than SS198. Hundreds of feet second faster. So more, you know, it's obviously going to greatly outperform the SS198. It's just not as fast as it, you know, ultimate fast used to be. Now I know right now people are going to make a comment. Why are you dropping it down in a perfect world? Bah, 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 bah. But unfortunately, I don't know where my ammunition is going to end up, what guns my ammunition is going to be fired in, and I have to make it for what is going to work on the market. That said, if we still don't have issues, no issues with 5.7, if we do some upgrades or something happens to the PSA and, and the cam issue is no longer an issue, okay, and the Smith & Wesson holds up, like, uh, I think it's going to hold up to be, and a lot has to do with the, the gas system. And it's a boosted system, not a delay. <laughs> uh, again, detail teaser. It's, a two, it's going to be a two-hour in-depth video. Um, I may just br I may bring it back up to 48. But for right now, with the number of PSA rocks on the market and the number of Ruger 5.7s on the market, I am just bringing my stuff down to 48, 45,000 PSI at 80 degrees Fahrenheit just to be on the safe side. Now, the following videos, we shot them outside. Uh, one of the nice things about being out in farm country is I've got a, basically an unlimited sized gun range um, out there in the farmland. Uh, it's kind of nice. You can see a lake in the background. It's a, it's a small it's a small pond. It's somewhere between a pond and a small lake. It's spring fed and it's in the middle of the farm field. So it's a, it can't be farmed or anything like that. So it's a nice depression out in the middle of nowhere. The sides make a nice backstop. It's got lots of trees around it. It's a nice place to hang out and have a good time. You can see some stuff in the picture in the background. There's a little uh, deck and stuff like back there. Uh, it's a great place to have fun. But I test fired all of the current S4 and current T6B and all of the mainstream 5.7s. All right. Uh, again, Jay from Elite Ammunition. Again. Don't forget your coffee. And yes, I know, everybody start complaining about me slowing my ammo down. My ammo is still the fastest on the fucking market, and it always will be the fastest on the market. But until uh, until further notice, 45,000 PSI at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and I can back it up if anybody wants to freaking put the money down. I tell you for a fact, I use an established off-the-shelf pressure testing system. Established. It's been established for almost 20 years. I've just figured out a way to use it in such a way that it accurately records the pressures in a blowback system in the 5.7 pistol. And I'll put that in fucking writing. And if you anybody wants to find out, no problem. You can walk up. You can throw it on the check. You sign the non-disclosure agreement, non-compete agreement. You throw it on a nice whopping chunk of money, and then you bond. You put up a bond. An insured bond so that if you ever let that information slip and as to how I do it, the bond comes payable to me. And the bond's going to be a pretty healthy one. So again, Jay from Elite Ammunition, don't forget your coffee. Have a good day. We're good. Or we can write down the numbers afterwards. You should be able to see this readout on the... Uh, S4, FSN Mark II, obviously it's one of my carry ones, it's all tricked out. If it doesn't read it, let me know, Joe. Is it reading it? Yeah. Are you writing it down? You're shooting too fast, so I'll just write it down. I after. can't hear you. You're shooting too fast, so I'll write it down after. As long as it's stored. <laughs> Catching the brass at all. I know. I 
got the first one, but then you started shooting too fast. We'll write it down in the later. Okay. It's slower, but the problem is, is the, uh, some of these new guns. S4 Rock Non-Threaded Barrel. S4 uh, M and P. It's not recording. Nothing? I think, I think it missed two of them. Ruger R57 S4. Oh, that fucking Ruger trigger. I hate this goddamn thing. And of course, the magazine jam. Fucking pile of shit. And I'm using the Ruger magazine. It's not recording. How about now? Yep. Leave it record. Let me get this last. Of course, we're not catching any of the brass. So much for experimenting with a new way to catch brass. Kill it. T-34 
T6B FSN. If it doesn't read, Joe, let me know. It's not rock five, uh, rock five seven uh, T six B, and yes, it does have uh, fiber optic sights on there. We offer them, and also in case somebody noticed, even though I was cursing it, our fully adjustable front and rear fiber optics uh, for the Ruger, and also on the five seven was my one of my uh, low profile uh, fiber optic sites in case anybody is wondering It's not recording. We're good. Yeah, it's hard. I got my rhythm. T6B, Smith & Wesson m and and I have to reiterate, don't forget your magazine loading tool at home. Ruger R57 T6B. And make sure to push the speed in on this stupid trigger. It's not recording. Now? Yep. I'm 
probably shooting too fast at a software. Normally I have the screen where I can see it, so I know it reads it. I get in the habit of my own cadence.